Amen and amen. amen. All right. I hope your Bibles is o- are open to the book of Mark chapter 10, where we started from last week. Mark chapter 10 from verse 17. I will attempt to do a quick walk this morning. I have a very, very long syllabus to cover, but I'll cover it in a very short time. Let's stand in the honor of the word of God. So this time around, we are going to read in an alternative form. So in an alternative form, I'll read verse 17. You read 18. And we're going to do like that to verse 24. Glory to God. Are you ready? Are you ready? Glory to God. Now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. Then Jesus looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack. Go your way. Sell whatever you have and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. Astonished at this But Jesus answered again and said to them, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. So the key that Jesus was speaking about here is not that Jesus was against prosperity. What Jesus was against is trust in the riches you know in verse 17 of that mark chapter 10 this guy was a good guy he said he was going out on as jesus was going out on the road somebody came running he, re, he ran after the master even though he was very rich. Rich people don't run like that. But he did something right. He ran after Jesus. But he did not just run. He knelt before him. And he asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Which means that there was something inside him saying to him that everything that I have and all that I have done does not guarantee eternal security for me. And so the question Jesus was answering is that anyone who wants it eternal life to be guaranteed for them cannot hold on to riches cannot trust in riches cannot what does it mean to trust cannot put their confidence in riches when the bible says that he had great possession of course last week i said great possessions had him 
The language of possession, actually, another word for that possession is that he had real estate. That's why Jesus said he should go and sell. So it wasn't like he had money in the bank. Jesus would have said, go and bring all the money that you have and give it to the poor. Jesus said, go and sell your real estate. People really invest in real estate for the security of their old age. Is that not so? So they, they can have an investment. And since real estate is one of the most viable investments that you can have and is very secured, this guy seems to have secured his future. Even though he thought he secured his future, yet he knew that there is no eternal life in his security. And then Jesus said, my guy, what you thought you have is in the way of eternal life. Go and sell it. Go and give it out. When, he, when Jesus said, give it to the poor, what Jesus was implying is, give it to those who will not be able to pay you back. Amen. Amen. You see, if Jesus had said, go and give it to a rich man, it can be a matter of network. But Jesus was saying, I want you to die to that possession. I want that possession to stop possessing you so that you can become what I want you to become. And what the guy lost was not just the fact that he lost money, was not just the fact that he lost the opportunity to disciple, to be a disciple of Jesus. What he lost was the opportunity to make an indelible mark in the sand of time. I want you to speak to your neighbor this morning. Say, neighbor, are you ready to partner with God? I hope I am not sitting by the rich young ruler this morning. Listen to me, neighbor. What you think you have is really not yours. God owns everything that you have. You are only a steward, an account manager. <laughs> <laughs> you know that the account manager is in trouble if he you spends your money anyhow if he transfers your money without your permission that account manager is in what well, is in deep trouble but that's who we are with whatever God has given you so lastly, you will say to them, neighbor, delete ownership mindset. Embrace the worship mindset. Say that to two people as you take your seat this morning. Glory to God. So last week we started speaking in this direction uh, about partnering with God as one of the pillars that uh, forms the, uh, the structure of our faith journey. And, um, you know, we've talked about praying, that praying, you know, most people don't have a problem with praying as long as you will not touch this partnering thing. They, they, like, they like the fact that like, it's just like the rich young ruler. He worshiped Jesus, literally. But Jesus don't, Jesus don't go there. Don't go. Don't go. When, when we were singing I Surrender All last week, after I was done preaching, there was this condition that was ringing in my mind that that same condition is what is ringing in some people's mind. Lord, I surrender all. If you will not touch my money... I surrender all. If you would not ask me to sell that land, 
on to thee my we sing i surrender in the church with conditions in our heart and yet we cannot escape partnering if you are going to be solid believers in christ if you are going to be solid believers in christ we cannot escape partnership with god and i remember that i gave us about four four reasons part of the four reasons why you must partner with god i said that god um the first thing i said was that it is implied and what commanded is that not so and then part of what i said that it's also a proof of your trust in god that every time you give of your substance you partner with god what you are saying is god i trust you i don't trust in his riches i don't trust in this landed property i don't tr- whatever it is that i seem to own i don't own them i am only a steward and of course part of what i shared was the fact that god's agenda will not be perpetuated on earth except we partner with his kingdom glory be to god and then of course last week i remember that i ended on the note of shigide i'm sorry shigidi how many people remember that one glory be to god i don't want to say somebody say shigidi but if you don't partner with god you are going to partner with his enemy if you don't partner with god you're going to partner with his enemy the money that you are holding back from him will first become an idol in your life it becomes something you use in building an idol it becomes something you use in serving other gods but him there is nothing that you own that does not belong to him so of course i don't want to go back to the things i shared last week uh, you can go and hear more about shigidi amen and amen in the on, it's on, on it's online it's available for you another thing i realized the reason why you must embrace partnering with god is the fact that partnering with god makes salvation disciple discipleship and nurturing of souls to become possible everything comes at a cost everything comes at a what cost and the way that god has structured it is that his people will finance his his mission his people will finance his kingdom because everything comes at a cost so when you hold back from god you are holding back from the opportunity to be at a part of somebody's salvation story a part of somebody's discipleship story a part of somebody's nurturing story like i said in the video that you watched the church remains the hope of the world when whatever you are doing for the church of jesus you are giving hope to the world people are not going to develop people are not going to grow people are not going to 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 be all that god has called them to be except there is an existence of a structure like a church not the building alone but the opportunity to gather like we are gathered this morning would not have been possible without the faithful partnership of some people in the kingdom of god another reason why we must embrace partnership this is beautiful this is beautiful is the fact that when you partner with a ministry an organization or a person what you are doing is you will be partaking of the grace of god that is resident upon that ministry upon that person upon that organization let's let's go let's you know philippians chapter 4 from verse 15 there's a bible verse that we all like to quote verse 19 but my god shall supply all your needs according to his what riches in glory but we quote it like this but my god shall supply all my needs it is not all your needs it and, and yet verse 19 says, all your needs it was a prayer of apostle paul Philippians chapter 4 verse 15. Can I see it? Glory be to God. 
Now, you Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me with, with me concerning giving and receiving, but what? You only. So for even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. And I say, indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the thing sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Who did they give to? Who did they give to? Let me ask you. Who did they give to? Speak. Speak. Who did they give to? When, G, when Paul was praying for them, he said it is acceptable to who? It is well pleasing to who? So what they were doing to Paul, who they were they doing to? To God. So everything you do for a man of God, for your pastor, you do for an organization, for the church. What you do for a ministry. What you are doing is that you are partaking of the grace of God that is resident upon that man of God, upon that ministry, upon that organization. And then it was after this that it now said, and my God. And my what? My God. My God. The one that called me. The one that made me an apostle. The one that chose me. The grace of the one that I run with. He said, my God shall supply all your needs. All your what? Need. According to his riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. Which means that if you want to be able to claim this scripture, there must be an exchange. Amen and amen. Now, I'm not saying that you buy prayer. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm only saying that the implication of partnering with God is that you enjoy the grace of God. And listen, it is grace that makes the difference. It is not labor. When you labor in grace, it is different with, with when you labor by yourself. It's totally different. So grace is what you want. So every time you give, one of the reasons why you must embrace partnering is that what you are doing is you are creating a platform for the grace of God to flow upon your life. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. I'm just trying to teach this morning. Galatians chapter 6 from verse 6. It says, let him who is taught the word, what should he do? What should that person do? He should share in all good things with him who teaches. With him who teaches. And then, you know, many pastors don't like to teach this area. Or if we teach it, we gloss it. We gloss over it. So that they won't think that we are asking for money. So that these pastors have not come again to rip people up, off. But one of the things the Holy Spirit has rebuked me about is that I should never withhold the truth from his people. Because I'm trying to protect my own name. His people are more important than what I'm trying to stand for. And the first thing, what am I trying to stand for? Apart from the word of God. Verse 7 now says, Do not be deceived. Say, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows. So what, does he, what is he saying in this context? It's when you share in all good things, it is tantamount to sowing. And then he says, that's when you are going to reap. Share in good things with the person that teaches you the word. That opens your eyes to the word of God. We share in good things with them. And verse 8. So for he who sows to his flesh, will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit. What will he do? Reap everlasting life. And then verse 9. Says, and let us not grow weary. This is where people lose it. People grow weary because results did not show in the first month. Some people, they said, I made up my mind that I was going to pay tight. And then, 
at the end of that month i paid my tithe and that this the following month was so terrible i struggled through that month no some people will like i've been doing it for the next for the last six months now. i've not seen any difference in my life he says don't be weary why what doing good for a new season for a new season you will reap if you do not lose heart first corinthians chapter 9 verse 11 This pastor just wants to teach his, his people this morning. Amen. Look at what Paul said. He said, if we have sown spiritual things for you, is it a great thing we reap your material things? So, which means that it's an exchange. As he sows spiritual things, it is expected that you communicate with material things. Amen and amen. That's how to partake of the spiritual things. All right, let me move on from there. Another one. Let me just give us one more. What I love about it, why you must embrace this lifestyle is that I, I'm trying to pick from four, four options because that's the last one I want to give us. Glory be to God. Your giving has a consequence on eternity. Your giving has consequence on eternity there is eternal value in partnering with god there is eternal value in partnering with god with your finances with your possession the bible says in proverbs chapter 3 verse, verse 10 verse 9 it says honor the lord with your substance which means that when i honor god with my substance and the first fruit of my increase it says my bands will be filled with many sorry can you give me proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10 my god honor the lord with your what possessions kjb says substance honor the lord with your what possessions and with the what first fruit of all dying increase it says in verse 10, he said, So shall your bands be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. It is an honor to God when we partner with Him with our substance. We are honoring Him. And when we honor Him, you see, things that we do on earth here has consequences on what is happening in, 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 in heaven. He has consequences on it. It has consequences on it. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. It says, Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust. What does it do? Destroy. And where thieves break in and steal. You know, internet fraud. That, those are the kind of thieves we have now. You know, they are moneyless. You know, after some people have bought land from family, the family will be in contention. And the land will become... So he said, where thieves do not break in and steal. Sorry, where thieves do break, through, uh, break in and steal. He said, but what did he say in verse 20? He said, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. We must understand that one. It, must, it, 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 it is very important. We can lay up treasure for ourselves in heaven where neither moth nor rust is destroyed, where thieves do not break in and steal. Partnering with God is our opportunity to invest in eternity. In verse 21 of that Matthew chapter 6, I like it. Say, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also where your what treasure is there your heart will be also which means that one of the ways to set our affections on heavenly matters is by giving towards the cause of god the cause of the kingdom it just sets our heart it redirects our heart and so 
Let me move on from there because I can go on and on. So how do we partner with God with our resources? How do we partner with our resources? How? how? What, what are the various things we can do to partner with God? To make investments in heaven. I said the first thing is faithfully give your tithe. Faithfully what? Give your tithe. Faithfully give your, not the word faithfully. Faithfully give your tithe. Your tithe belongs to the Lord. And it belongs to the local church where you receive nourishment. Some people, it's, I believe it's out of ignorance. They distribute their tithes. There's one man in the village that is a prophet. So, if their tithe is 100,000 naira, and there's another one that uh, they see regularly, they will use part of that tithe to buy rice for that one. And then take some to the prophet in the village. And then share it amongst the three places where they think they have spiritual commitments. And yet, the principle of Titan is it belongs to the local church. Bring all. Bring what? All. Bring you all tight to the. And now, let me say this. Let me just say this because I can't teach in details about it because we have. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a video online. It's Power to Get Wealth. You can go and watch the series I did. Much more details about that. But you see. The, one of the principal ways that God is asking us, that has, he has asked us to tithe with him, without, so that you, you will not be, it's not stress and all of that, is just to, uh, to give our 10%. That's all. Listen, the error that we have made before is that we give tithe so that we can be blessed. We don't realize that the, uh, the proof that you are blessed is your titan. How? Galatians, sorry, Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. Uh, it's the story of Abraham in meeting with Melchizedek. After he met Melchizedek, the Bible says that Melchizedek blessed him. Let's go there. I feel like going there. Genesis chapter 14. For, some, for the purpose of some people, I know that several things flies around on the internet. Glory be to God. But let's set perspective here. So then Melchizedek, verse 18. King of Salem brought out bread and wine. Sorry, is the person on the projector sleeping? Because the person projected for somewhere now. Genesis chapter 14. Oh, praise God. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread, bread and wine. Ah, he was, that was a type of Jesus. He was the priest of God Most High. And then verse 19 says, And he what? Blessed him, blessed Abraham, and said, Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And then verse 20. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. In response, what did Abraham do? He gave title of all. So it is not, this is before the law. This has nothing to do with the law. Jacob, I, I, Jacob did the same thing. But you see, what I realized about this place is the fact that he was first blessed and then Abraham gave in response to the blessing. And you and I have been blessed by Christ. So because we are blessed people in Galatians chapter 3, the Bible says that we are blessed with believing Abraham. So if we are blessed like that, it means that what we just need to do is to respond the way Abraham responded. I realized that this one, this incident happened at least 500 years before tithe was instituted in the law. So it predates the law. It's far before the law was ever mentioned. So why do you need to tithe? Number one, it provides for God's house. It provides for God's house. It provides for God's house. Your tithe keeps us in a place of worship. It gets us on the billboard. 
It helps us, it helps us to pay salaries of the, of the staff. It helps us to organize life-transforming experiences, life-transforming events, like the faith conference as it's coming up two Sundays from now. Glory be to God. He helps us to support people in need. He helps us to shape the life of young people. He helps us to take people from destitution, of, from prostitution, and he helps us to bring them into the kingdom of God. Your, your giving, your tithe provides for the house of God. Number two, why should I tithe? It proves to God that I trust him. It's your proof of trust. That's why we tithe. Number three, it's a reminder that I am not the source of what I own. That God is the source of it. Glory to God. The God owns all that I own. I'm just a steward. Another reason why, why you should tithe is that it breaks the hold of greed and self-reliance of your heart. It breaks the hold of greed and self-reliance. And I, I will say this one, that Titan lets everything else in your life know that God is first. That God is first. So when money comes into my hand, how do I apportion it? What is the first thing that I do? My tithe flows. Maybe I should say this, tithe isn't an act of generosity. We need to get that one. Tight isn't an act of generosity. Tight is obedience. Tight in his obedience. You know, I saw the story of, um, of Colgate in a book that I was reading. And, and the name of the man is in, in 1806. It was said of him, he said, William Col Colgate established a, a start soap and candle business in Manhattan, New, Manhattan, New York, on Dutch Street. William followed his goal of prosperity through life and became one of the most prosperous men in the city of New York. Colgate was a titer throughout his long and successful business career. He gave not merely one-tenth of, of the earnings of Colgate soap products. He gave two-tenths, then three-tenths, and finally five-tenths, that is 50%. Of all his income to the work of God in the world, he was a regular contributor to the funds of Baptist Missionary Union and took upon himself the entire support of a foreign missionary. Colgate today is an household name in everywhere in the world. Is that not so? When you enter a store and you say you want Colgate toothpaste, it won't take them time to take you show you where it is. And the man lived in 1806. Your name will not be forgotten. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Because of his obedience to the principle of Titan, his name is still ringing a bell till today. How many people are, if you are here and you don't know Colgate, raise up your hand and close your eyes. That's what it is. Another way by which you can partner. How can I partner with God? How can I partner with God? How, how, how can I be a part of what God is doing through his kingdom and in his kingdom? The other way we can do is to partner beyond your regular giving. I call this sacrificial giving from time to time. Just some, some of us God cannot even prompt our heart to give beyond the 10%. Some of us, we are, some people are not even doing 10% at all. Some people, they do 10%, they, they, that 10%, they, it is calculated to the T. In fact, sometimes you, 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 you even put the cover. 997,565 Naira 0,5 cobble. So we are trying. But what I'm saying is this. Partner with God beyond your regular giving. 
Grace giving always does better than the law. So if you want to say that, oh, we are not under the law, then give under grace. Under grace, they sold their possession in Acts chapter 4 that we read. In under grace, they sold their possession in Acts chapter 2. But we should understand that we should, we can always do better than we are given. We can do better than what we are offering God right now. Another way by which you can partner with the kingdom that I realized is that you can give financial support to your pastor or your pastors. You can give financial support to them. Sow a seed into their lives. Listen to me. When your pastor does not have to think about money, he will get more revelation than you can imagine. He will bless you more. Sometimes the reason why some pastors are ineffective is because the time when they are supposed to be investing in reading their Bible, praying, and interceding for God's people, they are doing jaman jaman like every other person. Because by experience, pastors already discovered that we can't trust these church members to give us anything. Amen and amen. But it's, 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 you are partnering with the kingdom. Every time you give to your pastor, every time you give to, your, to, to, to the man, to, to, to uh, the, the, the pastor, whoever, even if anybody that ministers here, you can sow seed in their lives. Like I explained the other time, it, it, it helps the grace that is upon them to drop on you. And you don't give to your pastor because they need it. Amen. You don't wait for your pastor to need it before you give him. Or you give her. You know, some of us, the problem is that pastor does not need if, if, if he needs money in his house, sorry, if he needs rice in his house, we'll go and buy rice for him. You are waiting for him to need it. And yet, I realize that Isaac did not need the meat that Esau was going to bring. He was in the house. After all, the one he eventually ate, where did they get it from? From the house. Did the blessing drop? My God, it dropped too. So he doesn't have to need it before you honor him. It is part of kingdom support. Amen and amen. It's part of partnering with God when you partner with your pastor. That, that's the truth of the word of God. So let him that is taught in the word communicate in all good things with him that teaches him. Very important. Very crucial. He does not even have to appreciate you. Amen. Some people will be like, ah, Pastor, you didn't see the money that I sent to you. No. What you are relating with is not him. You are relating with the grace of God that is upon his life. That's what you need to flow. Amen and amen. It's not, it is not the... It is not the the thanksgiving that he would do. I remember Baba Deboe sharing a story of how that somebody gave him a large sum of money. And the, man, the person saw him and said, Ah, Daddy, I hope you saw what I said. He said, Yeah, God bless you, my son. So he, now, he now said, He said, The Lord will help me thank you. And the man, the man was like, He was waiting for more. Ah. He said, I said, the Lord will help me thank you. After everything, he left. He was not happy. And Baba said, what he didn't understand is that it is better God thanks you than I do the thanksgiving for you. That's the attitude we ought to have to give in to our pastors. When I give to my pastor, I give with understanding. I know what I am doing. Amen and amen. I'm not giving to him because he needs it. I'm giving to him because I am investing in, the, in, in my own future. I am partaking of the grace of God that is upon his life. So people see me, they say, ah, and we see, we sometimes, we, when you talk, when you give solution to things, that it looks like his reverend that is talking to us. It's because I am, I don't need to call him. There is a spiritual substance on him that is rubbing off on me. Another way you can partner is give whenever you are prompted by the Holy Spirit to sow special seed. 
Give whenever you are prompted by the Holy Spirit to give a special seed. It can be random. It's not, it might not be what you are planning. But obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Listen, it's very unlikely that the devil tells you to give towards the kingdom of God. Amen. So that's something that he's still talking to you to give. It's, it's very unlikely that it's the devil. Amen. So we must prompt, we must yield to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And listen, you, you, you don't consider the figure. Because in giving, what we, are, what we realize is that it is not what is given that matters, it is what is left after you have given. It is what is left. I have 100,000. I gave 50,000. Another person has 1 million. He gave 100,000. Who gave more? Who do you think gave more? In the sight of God, the person that gave 50,000 gave more because he gave 50%. Jesus looked at the widow who dropped two mites in the offering basket and he said, this woman has done better than everybody that has given in this room today. Why? Because he gave all. And it's important that we understand that. You understand that we 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 give in that manner. And then the last one I'll say in this section is give to the poor. Give to the poor. He that gives to the poor lends to his maker. Support the brethren. Amen and amen. Sometimes see, some people come to church just like we are here this morning. Some people came with their last card. The Holy Spirit prompted you to give the person 1,000. You are wondering why should I give the person 1,000? You do not know. Just follow the prompting of the Spirit of God. Amen and amen. Be eyes to somebody, to somebody that is blind. Be fit to somebody who is lame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is part of kingdom support. When we support one another. When we support one another. Pay somebody's school fees. Amen and amen. If you can pay it, pay somebody's house rent. If you can pay it, I'm not talking about condoning irresponsibility. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. But giving to the poor, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 31, his he who oppresses the poor reproaches his maker, but he who honors him Ask mercy on the needy. That is when you honor God, you will be merciful to the poor. How do we profit from partnering as I close? And I need to run through this one very, very fast. How do we profit from partnering? Because I'm not going to be preaching next week. My father and the gospel is going to be in the house Glory be to God. A person of Reverend Victor Adeyemi is going to be, is going to be impacting us on a whole new level. The first thing, because many people give and they do not get rewarded for giving. They do not, they do not see the profit. They do not see the effect of their giving. And it's the, the first thing that I realize is that when you want to profit from partnering, you have to do whatever you are doing in faith. Do it in faith. Don't just do it religiously. Do it in faith. Not out of fear, not out of religion, not out of the fear of causes the new creation cannot be caused, not of necessity, not out of pressure. It must be done by faith. When I challenge you to give this money, for example, it should not be out of the fact that you feel pressured or you feel like impressing somebody it should be out of the fact that you are giving in faith the next time you are going to tithe tithe in faith the meaning of giving in faith how do you tithe in faith you speak word mix it with words say lord in the name of jesus i sow my seed this morning i give my tithe this morning as i give my tithe i declare that the windows of heaven are open upon me ah as i give my tithe this morning ideas are flowing into my heart that was what happened at Gibeah. 
Solomon gave a thousand month offering. God showed up in his dream. God showed up in his dream. Has got to show up. Give it with expectation. Amen and amen. Give it with what? Expectation. The second thing I will say to us, for us to enjoy the dividends of partnership with God in terms of finances is to do it on time and do it promptly. Do it on time, do it promptly. Don't postpone your giving. There are times where, where the, that, that seed needs to be timely for it to pull the effect that you need for your life and ministry. Another reason, another thing that I will say to us, if you're going to profit from partnering is, please, don't uproot your giving with unbelief. Don't speak negative words after you have given. Unbelief stifles the flow of grace. The reason why many believers are not profiting from partnering with God is because of unbelief. They circle their giving with so much unbelief that the seed is usually uprooted and it is just there. The man said that says, what are they even doing with our money? It's uprooting your seed. When you were young, we planted beans. To know how far it has sprouted, we dig it out. And then the beans stop growing. We have to leave it for it to come out by itself. Not to check on it. And let me say this last one. Expect divine ideas and implement them. This is a major missing link. That's why we started business enterprise service. Amen and amen. To teach us how to do business. To teach us on the mentality of business that, that, that makes entrepreneur impossible. But you see, when you give, one of the, re, one of the result of your giving is ideas ideas you should expect it the next time you after you have given the next time you you you, you plant your seeds so father i am open to divine ideas that's what it means he says it will pour you out a blessing it was a blessing but your room will not be able to contain it so expect divine ideas and implement it Solomon, after sacrificing everything, God showed up and God said, what do you want? And he says, I want wisdom. And God said, I'm not, just going to, I'm not just going to give you wisdom. I'll give you everything that comes with wisdom. And you'll get riches also. You did not seek for the life of your enemy. So that's strategic partnership. Say, God, as I sow my seed, I expect harvest of ideas. Harvest of ideas. I harvest of Triumphing ideas as I sow my seed. One of the pillars, apart from praying, apart from preaching, apart from pastoring, is partnering. Partnering with God. You cannot come into partnership with God and lose. God will not hold you. God has your best interest at heart. All eyes closed, every head bowed this morning. Let me start from here. Maybe you are here this morning. You have never said yes to Jesus. You have never given your life to Jesus. If you are like that this morning, today is your day. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you have been waiting for. Jesus Christ laid down his life so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. If you're like that this morning, you're under the sound of my voice, you have not given your life to Jesus before. What are you waiting for? Can you signify by raising up your hand? Jesus is calling you. He's inviting you. 
to he wants to be your lord and your personal savior i want to give you the opportunity for you to invite him into your heart if you are here this morning you have not said yes to jesus you have not accepted him i'm inviting you it is the greatest miracle that can happen in your life if you're like that can you signify by raising up your hands is there anybody like that this morning who wants to say jesus be the lord of my life jesus i want you in my life is there anybody like that this morning thank you heavenly father thank you heavenly father the second call i want to make this morning is two you are here this morning you want to make a fresh commitment to your partnership with god by giving your tithe faithfully into this house by making sure that your heart is connected through your giving you want to do that this morning all eyes closed every head bowed nobody looking around can you signify by raising up your hands i want to pray for you just raise your hands up let me pray for you you want to commit to your partnership with god thank you heavenly father thank you heavenly father there is nothing that we have that he doesn't own he's inviting you into partnership and then you are here this morning you have heard all that i've said since last week and this week and you believe that god is calling you deeper god is calling you to a greater dimension of partnership with him can you signify by raising up your hand i want to pray for you especially this morning greater dimension some of us will be giving our second tithe it's not just one tithe anymore it will be second tithe it's covenant and we'll make it regular throughout the rest of this year if you want to trust god to be able to partner with him on a greater measure I'm not going to call anybody out I'm just going to pray for you where you are thank you heavenly father father I pray for your children this morning whatever it is whatever heart commitment they are making towards your kingdom towards the establishment of your glory on earth till the heart is filled with the knowledge of your glory as the water covers the seas father i declare that you will supply their needs you will supply all they need to make it happen in the name of the lord jesus i declare let this season be a season of greater doors for them in the name of the lord jesus thank you heavenly father we give you praise and the glory in jesus name